since Clay asked the first question, it got me out of my office. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, Nike doesn't force feed these things to you. Do you collaborate? Do they send you something? What's the decision making process? Have you ever turned down one of their ideas? Uh, yes, we have uh, turned down one of their ideas, but let me explain the process. And, and I can't remember what year we started uh, with the uh, retro jerseys uh, and uniforms, but they'll bring a design to us. We'll look at the design, we'll kick it around, we'll get some input, and we'll make some modifications uh, based upon what we think or feel should be added. Uh, this particular weekend, that occurred as well. So we looked at um, the original design, and they have some very creative people, obviously, uh, but we, we did not uh, approve the original design, so we added some of the elements that you'll see this weekend, and that's happened every single year we've done that. Um, pretty much uh, the, the, the colors, the stripes, um, uh, on the side of the pant in particular. Um, I can't remember the helmet part. I wasn't a part of that piece. Uh, but the, the, the numbers, the color of the numbers on the jerseys were darker. Uh, so we added more scarlet into it. Austin, and then go ahead, uh, Ben, after Jim. Gene, how do you balance, how do you find that balance between wanting to maybe embrace uh, a trend or something that might want or the kids want with maybe a segment of the fan base that only wants That's the to difficult see. part, yeah. yeah. You're in it. You're right in, the, right in the middle of it. You know, we're blessed here. You know, we're at an institution that has such great, rich tradition and history. Uh, you have to make sure you respect that. Um, and there's certain things be, that become untouchable in that regard. Hang on, Sloopy. I mean, it becomes untouchable. Uh, but at the same time, you have to recognize that uh, our demographic is changing. You know, our world is changing. We have 30,000 students that come to all of our football games. And then recruiting has changed. Our competitors have changed. So there's that balance of respect, uh, our history and tradition, but also moving ourselves further into the 21st century, uh, which, you know, kind of the, the landscape defines that for you. And the uniforms are part of that. It's not something that we'll do every game. You know, I get a couple emails from people say we're not Oregon. You're right. We're not Oregon. And we're not going to be Oregon. We're Ohio State University. And we're going to pick one game every single year where we try and do this. Good question. Ben, you mentioned you have worn the alternates and the throwbacks in the past, but this is a pretty drastic change, changing the colors of the home jerseys. Some people thought our first one was drastic. <laughs> it's just a matter where you sit. <laughs> something that Nike has been pushing for a while and you guys mm -hmm. were resistant to or is this something that they offered the black jerseys and you said okay? No, the black uh, hasn't been one that they've been pushing for a long time. I think maybe it was two years ago they first surfaced the idea. In fact, we're looking at next year's right now. So as you guys understand the ordering cycle, we have to make decisions now on next year because of the, the way things are manufactured. So we're going through that process now of determine if we're going to do it, what it would look like, what modifications we make. Uh, so it's not something that they pushed. But is this something you were, or the program was initially resistant to? And you see what I'm saying? There? Specifically the black? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's just, uh, this is the first time it came to us the, out of their creative shop, the kitchen, they call it, the way it came to us. Yeah. Front row middle, Rob. So what are you looking at now? Give, give me a break. <laughs> I'm just trying to get through the day. <laughs> I can't, obviously, I can't share that. Also, a perception, maybe it's reality, that Archie, is Archie involved in this process? Mm -hmm. It gets run past So him. one of the other questions, I was watching you guys, by the way. I listened to you guys, which I said, okay, I got to go help my man out. But anyway, um, we go through a process first with Urban and I to look at it. Okay, Then we uh, include some players, which he did. It's a leadership team. Uh, and then I get some former players. I don't actually do it. Diana Sable gets with some former players and get their feedback. One year I actually met with Archie it was early in the process. So uh, Archie's seen it. Uh, some other former players, which I won't reveal who they are, but there's some other former players that looked at it as well. Far left, Doug. Um, so this seems to be not just a, a uniform thing, but I know you guys are calling it dark night of the shoe and yes the t actually we're not athletically I mean that's coming from other places you know, we're not driving that as an athletic department there were t-shirts in my grocery store <laughs> didn't buy some <laughs> I'd be unethical 
<laughs> Why? Uh, <laughs> they like them so, in Cleveland. But, but is it is it is this? More we do not have a promotion that's a dark out from the athletics. Okay, so there's some things that's popping up from different parts of the demographics, but we're not saying, you know, black out the shoe. That's not what we're doing. There's other people doing that. Now we're selling items. Right. To your point, yes, we are selling items. Let's say dark out of the shoe, right? I don't know if we're selling. That would be new to me. That might be something that I, that I don't know about. It's highly possible. Who, who do you mean doing trademark that? licensing? IMG. So you could come. No, it could be IMG or trademark licensing or any licensee could do that. Any licensee could come to us with a promotion as long as it fits our criteria for sale. Then we can license that product and and sell it. It's probably got the little TM on it. You ought to look to make sure it's le legit. Yeah, then you should go buy one. But anyway, so they, they, the, the little T, that means they went, they're a licensing company that went through our trademark and licensing and got that approved. So it's not something we said, okay, we're, athletics has said we're going to go print all these t shirts. That didn't got come from us. Okay, a couple more. Second row left. Ari, talk about um, getting into the century and, and how important it is for recruiting. Have you had discussions with Urban? And I mean, I'm sure you have a sure. pulse of how important, how important is that to recruit? Huge, how big is it huge, to huge. Okay, so if you guys all go back, so somebody was here, somebody, last year, Urban had this sitting on his coffee table. Does anybody remember that? Austin. Were you the one? Was he the one? Well, he was just interviewing him. And, and you saw it. You, but you saw, somebody saw it, right? Okay, when was that? That was, when? It was in June of last year. Yeah, 2014. Okay, so... You know, that was sitting out on his coffee table for a reason. You know, that wasn't for you guys to come in and look at so he can impress you. Okay, it's <laughs> sitting on the table because the recruits saw it. Recruits are um, impressionable today and have a great deal of materialistic interest. So reality is we're going to respond to that. You know, we, we have our job, our core mission is our student athletes that we serve, first and foremost. And that includes the recruits that we're trying to attract. So yes. We talk about recruiting all the time, which is why we have a waterfall in the locker room <laughs> that you can't walk through. You know, I'm old school. When you say waterfall, I figure I can go underneath it, right, and get my hair wet. It's killing me. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, Gene, a lot of numbers come out every year about, you know, Michigan sells this, Ohio State sells this, and Ohio State in some years is number one in college mm -hmm. marketing and all these other things. I would think a promotion like this to mm -hmm. encourage people to purchase a brand new product could create an amazing windfall for Ohio State trademark and licensing the athletic department, right. whoever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. Have you guys put an estimate or a price, a number, on how much money this one event, that these jerseys, all the black paraphernalia mm -hmm. is going to bring Ohio State? No, we have not, but we can get that for you when it's all said and done. I can't do that. I, I really can't. I, I've never looked at it. I really, honestly, I've never looked at it. You know, my, I look at spikes that are like the bowl game. The spike that you're talking about won't be huge. It won't be, it won't be huge. But we can get that for you. Uh, Rick Van Brimber. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Just keep in mind, the, the items that were sold were sold on Saturday in one day. So okay, let me back up. So was it last Saturday or Saturday before? Indiana Saturday. So the, it was announced that Friday and 9 o'clock that Saturday, all the Nike items were sent to the stores already and available for sale at 9 o'clock that morning. They were gone by mid-afternoon. Okay, so the inventory um, that came from Nike wasn't as significant as what people think. Now, there's some more inventory coming out, but it won't be as deep. So we'll get you that number. I just don't, I, we, didn't, we don't look at it that way. Um, we just don't. And so, but we can get you that number from Rick when it's all said and done. And last question, front row, Bill. This is not a uniform. It's actually about people on eBay. They'll probably make more money than we will, by the way. I'm sorry. <laughs> not a uniform question. Just curious about your opinion about the success that Michigan's having this year and what it means. Didn't I, I came over here for the uniform issue to help my coach. Why are you going off on this stuff? But, you know, it's a great program. They have a great platform for us to think that it wasn't eventually going to come back to a highly competitive level would probably be naive on our part. 
Um, it's just like a Penn State or, or other programs that have great rich tradition and history and a great platform uh, to think that they wouldn't be successful with the right type of leader um, be naive on our part. So I've always thought one day they'll be back in the game. Is it good for the rivalry? Uh, yes, yeah, good for the for the rivalry, good for the league, good for college football, and it's any any time any of our competitors are excelling, and we ultimately beat them, then yeah, it's it's a good thing. I mean that's that's what you want, right? I mean so, yeah, it's a good thing for for the Big Ten, good thing for college football. Gene, one quick thing: uh, 1994 Ohio State players decided to wear black socks against Penn State <coughs> and got beat 63 to 14. I think 1994. Yeah, I think yeah. Cooper. Where was I? Yeah. But Go ahead. <laughs> my point is, is there a risk involved Always. when you step away from the norm? You sure. You know what I'm saying? Always. Be foolish. Always. You, you, How much do you weigh that? You can't. I mean, you go back to your core values of what you're trying to accomplish and, and your principles and your planning principles. And the, the principles around this is uh, the, the self-esteem and with our student athletes when they come out of that locker room um, and, and, and the impact it has on recruiting. You know, I was blessed to have the personal experience uh, when Notre Dame had played USC at, at Notre Dame, and we went to the green jerseys. I was actually coaching at that particular time. Uh, and Dan Devine kept that secret to really three people. And, and the other the coaches, none of us knew. Uh, and then we'd go in the locker room, and that was the day when the jerseys were big. So you could come out and warm up in your normal stuff and go back in and change. You can't do that today. Uh, but to go in there and see those guys and – the excitement on their face, it was just, it was something that you never forget. And so you go back to what's the impact does it have on a Joshua Perry, on a Darren Lee, on a Tyvis Powell, on those guys, and, or a Taylor Decker, because he would tell you he'd prefer to wear black rather than white. Uh, so, you, so you get into those conversations and you know what it really means. So you, you take the risk. Every, well, there's a lot of things we do that, where there's risk, and you just have to evaluate the weight of that risk.